Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We are here in one of my favorite filming spot locations. It's springtime. The birds and the bees are doing their thing, but guess what? So is Mazda with this vehicle right here. What the heck is it? It's that redesigned 2024 Mazda CX-90. This particular one is a turbo and it's the premium plus trim. But before we get into this maximum size Mazda, this is their largest SUV they make, new for 2024, let's talk about what's going on here. Mid-size SUVs are becoming hotter and hotter. I really think that some people are done with full size and some people want the extra room that a mid-size brings over the smaller compact size crossover SUVs. Now for 2024, the CX-90 replaces the Mazda CX-9. And that's not a bad thing because what you're gonna find is a little bit more space on the inside, but it's what's under the hood that matters because we have straight six turbocharged power. But what I wanna find out is Mazda says that they want a more premium level feeling product, but they're trying to keep the price in a certain area to where it's not getting too high and pricing people at a Mazda. So what I wanna find out is, I wanna talk about this Mazda CX-90 and I wanna compare it to a premium brand that's Japanese, obviously Lexus, and I wanna compare it to the Lexus TX350. So let's go ahead, let's dive in our CX-90, Artisan Red. It's not Soul Red, Artisan Red, new color for a new SUV, and see if it is the better midsize to buy over the Lexus TX. Let's go ahead. Let's dive in and find out. Right off the bat, when it comes to style, Mazda just does something really, really right. There's not a lot of straight, hard edges, a lot of smooth curves, and I really feel like this is almost like what the styling from BMW should be instead of what they're actually doing over at BMW. Now, at the front of the business, you're gonna see great attention to detail. I like the way that they have these C-shaped LED daytime running lamps. Of course, you're gonna have your projector beam LED headlights, which are adaptive, which means that they move with the steering wheel left and right. And then you can see how they have the turn single and also a daytime running lamp extension that is splitting port the top and bottom of this grill trim. Now, as we work our way down, you have these large aggressive openings, which guess what? Look at this, my hand almost fits in the whole thing. Ah, can't get it out. No, just kidding functional corner air curtains, so it's nice to see that. And then as you come across the elegant, classy front end of this vehicle, to me, it's got the better style over a Lexus TX. The TX with the spindle grille and body design, on that particular model, it really doesn't wow me, but this definitely does. I love the vertical slots, gloss black. You do have forward-facing camera, and you'll notice like I always like to point out, the trim actually matches the badge. That's where they get that shape from. Working our way down, you do have functionality on the lower grill area, and you do have a bit of shiny chrome style material on the lower lip. But let me know in the comment section if you like the front end of this CX-90 better than the TX. And one other thing I wanna point out is that compared to the outgoing CX-9, this is actually wider. The vehicle is wider and it's a little bit longer. That's a good thing because it's gonna give you more room on the interior. Now, as we rise up, like I was telling you, that smooth, soft curves, no crazy folds, no big bulge. You just have a higher plateau in the center and I like the way it just drips down into the fenders. And this Artisan Red, like I was telling you earlier, it's not Soul Red. Soul Red is probably one of my favorite reds of all time. In the light, this thing is amazing. It really lights up like a ruby. Now, when you come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. So what you're gonna find is 21 inch wheels, machine aluminum accents, gloss black all the way around. Nice to see this kind of wheel size on a Mazda. 275 on the width, 45 series sidewall. And if you compare this to the Lexus, the TX obviously has different wheel sizes as well. This is the optional one on our Premium Plus Mazda. I, I kind of like the style of the wheel 
more so on this vehicle. It's classy, but it's also sporty at the same time. My other favorite part, painted around the fender opening. So no flat black, no gloss black. This is how it's meant to be. Let me know how you feel about that in the comment section if you like the painted fender flares. I'm gonna say that you probably do. Now, as we come down the side, you do get a badge that has that inline six with a little bit of chrome. I am gonna zonk this though, get rid of this. Why do we need a fake vent looking thing? If it was just a trim, I think it would be fine. It would look just fine. Everything is painted all the way down to the lower side skirt, extension from side to side here, from front to back with that chrome trim. And like I point out, when I say chrome, I'm not talking about actual chrome metal. This is plastic, but it's got the chrome finish on it. I'm gonna have Lori kind of zoom in on this back portion because it actually has the Mazda name stamped nice and clean in the back. I like that little touch, that attention to detail. Up top, you do have bright silver roof rails. You could get the crossbars. We do have artisan red on the mirror caps. And you can see how it's like laser thin on the turn singles. Really good looking. Bright, shiny metalwork only on the top, not on the bottom. You got flat black on the bottom. Working our way towards the rear. What's great about this crossover SUV is that it's rear wheel drive. That's the platform. So you're gonna get better handling characteristics than you are on the TX, because the TX is front wheel drive base. This though, remember, does have all wheel drive, just like you get on a TX. You do have the trim kind of folds out. The one area I got a zon because I don't like this area of flat black. I wish they would have done something a little different here. It just, I don't know, it just seems unfinished. Now, when you come around the back portion, just like up front, they did a spectacular job in the lighting. Full LED, very, very exotic looking on the lights. The roof spoiler should come out more. It's just too stubby. And that's what's gonna make me zonk. It's like a double zonk, it's like a twofer because if this came out further, you could take this wiper and tuck it underneath. As of right now, there's no room. But it would look even better if this came a little further back. I mean, just imagine it coming to where my hands are. I just think it'd give it a little bit extra sportier look and probably help with airflow, to be honest with you. Now on the back, tail end of the business, we got our CX-90 badge. Like I said, this replaces the CX-9. Now it's the 90, all wheel drive. And then working our way down to ground level, you just have a nice clean lower bumper area with a little bit of chrome finish on it. I was hoping that they would continue to bring the one exhaust outlet on each side. I just felt like that gave a nice finished look. Let me know how you feel about that. Do you like the clean look with no exhaust showing or would you rather have a finished tip on both sides like they used to have on the CX-90? I mean, excuse me, CX-9 not on the CX-90. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop that long hood because there's something under there that's very unique to the midsize segment. Let's go check out the engine in the CX-90. All right guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts. Underneath the hood, it's kind of sad because they have this ginormous, humongous engine cover. I guess that's not so bad because it is aesthetically looking in a pleasurable way, especially with the Mazda badge. It's what's underneath the plastic cover that matters. If you look at a TX, TXs have standard engine, a four banger. Yeah, you could get uh, the hybrid setup or plug-in hybrid. This though is good old fashioned ice and I love it. Ice, ice baby. We got a 3.3 liter inline six turbocharged power plant putting out 340 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque. It's made it to a new eight speed automatic zero to 60 in about six seconds flat. Top speed is governed to 130 miles per hour. MPGs, 23 in the city, 28 on the highway, and the vehicle weighs 4,885 pounds. Now at the end of the day, you can tow with this vehicle and it will tow up to 5,000 pounds, but pound for pound, horsepower for horsepower, there's no other midsize SUV that really is doing a straight six, turbocharged straight six at this price point. But we still need to get to price. But before we do, let's fire up this CX-90 and see it roll.
All right, guys, come on in to this 2024 Mazda CX-90, that premium plus turbo S trim. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I need a new midsize SUV. I've driven the one that I have for the past 12 years, and I'll be honest with you, it stinks. It smells. It literally smells in the SUV. My kids eat in it. They throw up in it. They fart in it. I, I need something new. I need something new. I'm definitely liking this Mazda, but I've also been comparing it to the Lexus SUVs as well because I want premium. I want Japanese and I want premium. But how much is the CX-90? Very good question. This one being the top trim and having all the goodies, the artisan red color, which is $595 just for that color. You're looking at an MSRP of $61,000. Let's see how it stacks up to the Lexus TX to the door panels. You're gonna notice that on this particular one, you do have light interior. Now you don't have to get light interior. This one has it though. Soft touch material up top, real wood finish. That's the real deal wood finish. I'm liking the way they have that shiny chrome style to match the chrome on the exterior. You do have this cloth, which I'm not in love with. I'll be honest with you, I'm not in love with it. It's too light and a top trim shouldn't have cloth. But the armrest is perfect. The stitching is wonderful. No gloss black around the switch gear. Door pocket is a decent size. You can get, I would say, one Checkers Chili Dog and Lori's favorite, a strawberry milkshake to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same story. Soft touch. Look at the way they shape the AC vents with the chrome trim. This has got to go. It's got to go. It's cloth. It looks cool, I guess. I just rather have like some type of leather or something here. So not my favorite. Let me know how you feel about it in the comment section. Slide on in. What do we got going on? You have a 12.3 inch infotainment system screen. If you're using Apple CarPlay, it becomes a touch screen. If, it, if you don't, then you're gonna have to use the Mazda direct drive control knob, which is located all the way down here. Now, with the navigation, the native navigation, you have clear graphics and fonts. It is actually quite easy to use. I mean, you come to the home screen and these are all your choices. I mean, there's not many. You could go into information. I could go into vehicle status monitor. It could tell you what's going to I'd be like, oh, today I want to check the engine oil. Boom. Measure it. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go ahead and start. And then we're good to go. So that's how easy it is to check things. And it's all using the direct drive control knob and it really is not that difficult once you get the hang of it. Let me show you the reverse cameras because this is where all new, super nice resolution, look how clear that is, 360. You do have your trajectory on the 360, which is wonderful. And then of course you could switch. I could hit here, boom, out the front. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I'm digging that. So really nice to see the ease of use with this system, working your way down, I love the AC controls. Real switches. So you have your toggle switches for your dual climate control. We have three stages of heated seats, three stages of ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. You got your LED readout. Down below, you got wireless charging, a 12 volt, and then more of this wood finish. I'm, I'm liking this, because look, no fingerprints. You have your MI drive controller. I'll show you this on the business side of things when you come over to the dash. This is gonna control your eight speed automatic. You got hill descent control and you could activate that button right there and it brings up your forward facing camera. Plus you could check out your 21 inch wheels so you don't scratch them. Don't wanna curb those wheels. Open this bad boy, two cup holders. There's your Mazda key fob, looking good, just as always. Real volume knob, there's your direct drive control knob and then you have the nice soft touch leather material on the armrest for your center console. We open up the doors, two USBs, but it's very shallow. This is not very deep. So if you're gonna drive around with your beanie babies so that nobody steals them from your house, you're only gonna be able to put two in there. So my advice is definitely make one of the two peanut because that elephant right now is going for about 1200 bucks. So I would keep peanut in there nice and safe so that when you're ready to retire, that's your 401k, right? Sell peanut and the rest of your Beanie Babies. Seats, the leather, the piping, the stitching, nice material, full electric assist for the passenger, 
full electric assist for the driver. You have a lighter headliner to match all the light materials in here. And then look at this ginormous panoramic sunroof. Love the way it's one touch operation. Look, mom, no hands. But why don't you come over here to the business end? I want to show you behind the sporty steering wheel in the CX-90. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel of this all-new Mazda CX-90. You do have two memory seat settings. And speaking of the memory seats, the settings are easy to get to. Nice, easy on the controls. My only concern is, is that everything is light in here, so you're probably going to have to clean this stuff on a regular basis. But, hey, it's a labor of love. If you love your car, you'll take care of it more. Now, when it comes to the steering wheel, I love the two different pieces of leather that they use. Look at the wonderful stitching. Very artisan, just like our artisan red. Even the way they did the silver trim on the horn button, you got flat back black on all the switch gear. You do have paddles to go up and down the eight speed automatic, and it is an electric tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then you have that 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. Watch this when I go into MI Drive. You got off-road because we got all-wheel drive, and then you have your normal and sport mode. We're gonna leave it in sport because red means race, and I'm feeling racy right about now. Look at all the red. That's a lot of race going on there. And then there is a head-up display on top of that. Of course, you're gonna have all your safety features, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, emergency brake assist, all those goodies. But let's get into the mid-row and see if your passengers are gonna be happy that you went Mazda over the Lexus. All right, guys, mid-row time. Your, uh, your passengers are feel like captains. You know why? Because you got a captain's chair arrangement in here. I like the way they give us a real armrest on the center console. So you don't have those stupid armrests that flop down. Nice and wide, just like the armrests up front. Backs of the seats, that leather material. You got plenty of room in here. You could put a couple Capri Suns for your kids. You could put uh, maybe some fruit roll-ups. Uh, maybe even some uh, Cool Ranch Doritos mm, with some Capri Sun. I'm getting hungry. Now, you do have a heck of a command center. Rear AC vents, USB-Cs, ventilated seats, and heated seats for the third row. Thank you very much. You do have your climate controls. I have my own heated and ventilated seats. And then, of course, just the amount of room that you have. It's much nicer than the CX-90, but... With all that, uh, excuse me, much nicer than the TX, Lexus TX. But with that being said, the Lexus TX does have more room. So there's more room than the CX-9, the outgoing CX-9 in the CX-90, but there's not as much passenger volume as the Lexus TX. But look, we got more. Two cup holders. Open this up just like up there. This center one goes a little bit deeper. So basically what you could probably put in here is a Care Bear. So if you're really holding on to your plush animals in hopes of cashing in because you that's your retirement, you could put one Care Bear here. You're probably gonna want the one with the four leaf clover because you're gonna have to be lucky to be able to retire on a Care Bear and two Beanie Babies. So you're gonna want that one with the four leaf clover, but you could put one in there. Look at this, you ready? Oh yeah, right down there. That's where you could keep your marbles. So if you ever lose your marbles, that's a good place to put them. You'll always find them once you lose your marbles because usually when you have kids, you're probably going to lose your marbles more than just once. But why don't we go ahead, let's get in the third row and see how this compares to the Lexus. All right, guys, third row time. Let's talk about some of the good things. The good thing is I like how far the seat opens forward. You do have some nice uh, plastic, so this will take a better beating of real estate for your kid's feet or whoever's getting in the back. The bad news is, is that if you have big feet like I do, and you know what they say about guys with big big shoes, right, and big feet, uh, they have even bigger feet. So I have to actually turn my feet sideways to get them to tuck underneath the passenger seat. And that's what really makes it comfortable. Other than that, you're definitely getting more room than the CX-9, the outgoing CX-9. But let's be real you're falling short compared to the Lexus 3, the TX350. So you got to ask yourself, do you want the better driving midsize SUV with more power? Or do you want more room for your passengers? If you're selfish, I know what your answer is. If you're a giving person, then you're going to want the TX to give your passengers a little bit more room. But with that being said, 
You do have USB-Cs. And I really like, whoops, where they mounted the AC vents. It's perfect to get some cool air back here because that's one of the things I've always hated is some of these three row SUVs don't have air AC vents in the back. Like what the hell, you want me to roast like a turkey? But anyways, let's get into the cargo area and see how this compares to the Lexus. All right guys, cargo area time. This is one of those areas like I was talking about earlier on the interior that the Lexus TX does have a little extra muscle in this arena of the SUV comparison, where this whoops up on horsepower and style. The cargo area is the same kind of story. So we have the rear seats up. You're looking at 16 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Now, what I do like is you have LED lighting. You do also have this cup holder here for a Yeti can. This is perfect for a Yeti can when you're, you know, been at the store all day, you're sweating, you've been working hard, spending your money, you can grab your Yeti can and guzzle down whatever the heck you have in there. Underneath this cover, there's a little bit of storage. Put some Twinkies. You can fill this up with some uh, little Debbie snacks. And then of course, on the passenger side, they're double dipping. What do we have? We have a home power source and a 12 volt. So they got you double dipping on that area. Now, some people would say, there's no way that these seats would fold down with where the mid row is. But this is where we prove them wrong very easily on Rady's Ride. So all you're gonna do, I love this. It's one, two, three, you just pull, look at that. Oh, it folds down, 50-50 split. Boom, totally flat. Of course, that mid row could fold down as well. Let's talk about the hard numbers for the non-believers out there. You're looking at 16 cubic feet of space with the third row up, 40 right now with the third row down. You fold down the middle row, you're looking at 75 cubic feet of space. Now those numbers are very, very, very good, but the Lexus TX is a little bit better when it comes to size. I do like the way they brought USB-Cs. Like I was telling you, when I was sitting back in the third row, you got your USB-Cs back there. So that's good news. But since we proved everybody wrong with seats folding down and cargo space, even though it's not as much as the TX, let's see where this is gonna lay the smack down on the TX350. Let's go on throttle in this Mazda CX-90. All right, guys, we are in this 2024 Mazda CX-90. Nobody is behind us, so we're gonna go on throttle. I do have it in sport mode, are you ready? On throttle, here we go. Nice smooth shift from that eight speed automatic. Allows you to get up to speed very, very quickly. Now there is some sound being pumped in through the speakers when you're in sport mode. Nothing too obnoxious, so I'm okay with it. I'm just glad that there is a good old ice engine underneath the hood, that 3.3 liter straight six turbocharged engine. Out on the highway is really where this thing shines. I mean, it's so smooth. The seats are comfortable and you can have your touch screen if you choose to do so with Apple CarPlay. If you don't, then you got to use the direct drive control knob, but that it's really not that difficult to figure out. Nice head up display. Visibility is awesome. And of course, the steering feel. This is the driver's SUV at this price point. This is the, the way to go if you want the best driving, the better handling, and in my eyes, the better looking compared to the Lexus TX. The graphics are nice and clear on the dash. Just the right amount of information. Sound ending material has been increased. The acoustic windshield, the thickness of the side glass, all of that has been improved on this 2024 CX-90. And then obviously when it comes to all the other fine touches in here, it, it's crazy how good the materials are. The only thing that I would change is get rid of the cloth. But even this light wood finish is classy. It doesn't have any veneer finish or anything like that on it. And just really good feeling from the steering. 
let's go into a turn here on the brakes really nice controllable i mean look at this yeah you ready to go on throttle on throttle here we go so that all-wheel drive system keeps you planning and the fact that this is real wheel drive based just allows it to handle and perform much better than a lot of the competition including the lexus tx you have your augmented reality on your uh, digital gauge cluster of the vehicles around you of course you have adaptive cruise but really feels good cruising down the road and man does it look good cruising down the road in this cx90 i think the thing that i really like on top of everything else in this cx90 is that it just it's a good size it it uh isn't too big you know the tx is just a little bit bigger than this vehicle and i i really like how everything is laid out in here it feels really really good and definitely high end um, to compare it to the lexus tx but really where this vehicle shines is in the performance i mean the handling is great in this thing you're not getting a lot of body roll which is nice throttle sensitivity is perfect and it's a torquey engine really allows you to take advantage of the whole chassis and the all-wheel drive system in this thing with how this engine produces power it's it's gonna blow your mind just how good it is all right guys from a dead stop again are you ready let's go ahead and use the paddles behind the wheel to uh make this happen on right, throttle here we go so you do get a gear indicator in the left right by the tack very very responsive on the up shifts but look at this really handles well love the torque and then of course the downshifts very quick on oh, throw here we go So it's nice that both in automatic, full automatic mode for the transmission, they shift well, the gears, but also in manual shift mode as well. I tell you, man, straight six. Really, really awesome. Really gets the power down nicely. And like I said, maneuverability of this vehicle is, it's gonna surprise you. stable under the brakes that's that zoom zoom you're getting that great zoom zoom experience in this vehicle on throttle here we go all grip and no slip but i'm hoping that this has been a good overall review of what the cx90 is bringing we're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up so i will see you in a split second all right guys it's been another great day in so many ways here in tampa bay see what i did there i'm a poet i didn't even know it definitely want to thank the whole mazda usa team for getting us access to this cx90 especially this one being the premium plus turbo let me know in the comment section which japanese car company are you going with are you going with the mazda with the cx90 or are you going to go lexus tx 350 with that premium Toyota brand. Let me know in that comment section. I'm dying to find out which way you're spending your money. But if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. I'll come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rise family. Of course, we can't forget the guns behind the lens, the muscle to where this operation works so well. Lori Givens already working that camera like a champ. Show us some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.